Hi there, I'm Robin. I'm a volunteer with the Lamp Community Health Center and I'm here to give you a little Garden 101 session. So the first three things you want to consider when you're thinking about putting in a garden are your soil, the sun it gets, and how much water your plants are going to need or how much water you have access to. Uh, these three things are really your big most important things before you even start getting all the fun vegetables and fruits and everything in there. So with the sun, you're going to want to have somewhere between six to eight hours of sun at least a day for things like tomatoes and your um, most important stuff, the zucchini, the eggplants, all that sort of fun stuff. Your greens and herbs can take less sun. They can actually get a little bit of partial shade and they'll be fine. Uh, when it comes to soil, you wanna make sure that your soil is not contaminated with, with anything. And if you're not sure, if you're gardening someplace new, you can actually make raised beds and fill those with new soil. And then you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, and then with water, of course, a lot of things, a lot of vegetables do take some good consistent watering. So you need to have access where you're not going to have to lug water very far or where you're going to uh, be able to keep it uh, nice and moist. And mulch sometimes helps with that too, but that's another part of the story. So squash is one of the best uh, vegetables to give a try your first uh, time gardening. Uh, there's two types, there's summer squash and winter squash. Summer squash are your zucchinis, basically, and then winter squash are things like your butternut squash or anything that you can keep over winter. Um, so zucchini is one of the easiest ones, uh, but all squash has a bad tendency to explode. It grows very big. Uh, so you're gonna wanna put it at the corner. You're gonna wanna, if it's a uh, trailing squash, you're gonna wanna try and maybe give it a little bit of a trellis to grow up. Um, basically, you're going to want to just try and keep shoving it out of the way of all your other plants if you only have a small area to grow in. So, now we're at one of probably the most popular things to grow in your vegetable garden, good old tomatoes. Uh, there's cherry tomatoes, there's your salad-sized tomatoes, there's beefsteak tomatoes. They all have slightly different properties, but some of the similar things you can do with them. You want to make sure they have a little bit of space as they grow up to get enough um, air through so that you don't have to worry about any sort of um, uh, molds or mildews. And uh, one of the big things with tomatoes, there's something called blossom end rot, which happens when you give it kind of inconsistent watering. So try to keep it nice and moist all the time, not too wet, but not to dry out, and you'll have some pretty happy tomatoes. Um, and then something else, a little sneaky thing you can do is take off the leaves of the bottom few layers and that way it'll A, get more air through, but also you can plant some things like basil and garlic around the bottom where, um, which are great companion plants for tomatoes. Tomatoes love basically anything you'd put in a tomato sauce, you can plant around a tomato. So leafy greens are one of the most nutritious plants you could possibly plant. Uh, they have, uh, um, they're great for partially shady areas. They actually don't like too much heat. So by putting them uh, in spots that are maybe behind taller plants, etc., they'll grow pretty well. Um, they will, they may bolt, which means that they grow really fast and throw, put out seeds really quickly uh, when the heat comes, if it's been nice and cool during the spring. But uh, again, they're the ones that get attacked the most by your um, slugs and your snails and caterpillars. And if you see the little white butterflies floating through, those are cabbage whites. They're called that because their uh, caterpillars love to eat anything cabbage-like or cabbage-related. So <laughs> feel free to shoo them away from your garden too. Um, but basically, uh, even if there are holes in your leafy greens, you can still uh, eat the, the plants. You just need to give them a little bit of a rinse. Make sure you uh, wash off any extra bits and pieces and uh, you're good to go. But uh, again, very healthy, pretty easy to grow and good for um, shadier spots.
So just to finish things up, remember that even the best gardeners kill plants. It's, it might happen, it's okay. If your kale and Swiss chard has holes in it, that just means it's really good and that you can still eat it yourself. Uh, so just, you know, wash your plants off and keep on going. And remember, not too much water, not too little water. And uh, just keep making sure to keep that soil moist for your veggies and uh, otherwise you'll do pretty well. We really need everybody to um, try and do a little gardening wherever they can, pot, even if it's little pots beside your um, sp spot or uh, a big garden. Every little bit helps with the insects in the animals and uh, also helps with water uh, mitigation. And if you have any questions, there are plenty of different groups around even uh, South Etobicoke and throughout the, the city that can help you out, including uh, our group, uh, the, uh, the gardens.